<clears throat> with some mobbing. We're going to wait till some people jump up in here. Main another prayer call. Y'all know what it is. You feel me? Y'all know what time it is. We going up in Jesus' name as usual. You feel what I'm saying? Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Oh, we're going to give everybody a few minutes. You know how that go. I'll let a couple people tap in, and then we're going to go up. You know what I'm saying? Hope everybody that was blessed in Jesus' name. You feel what I'm saying? If you're seeing this, uh, you definitely blessed. You know, the Lord woke you up. It wasn't you who woke yourself up. You feel me? So we have to be mindful of that. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? If y'all can, share the video. You know what I'm saying? So that we can get some people in here. We can definitely go up in prayer for what the Lord is, you know, continuing to press forward. Like I said, when it comes to uh, the Hunter Hood movement, man, nothing is stopping this, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to, like I said, continue to pray over these communities and these cities and these neighborhoods um, as much as we can every weekend until they let us up off this quarantine or this little shutdown thing. I'm going to be praying for these communities. You feel what I'm saying? Like I said, um, for those of y'all who know about the ministry and the movement that we're doing, I go across the United States. I preach the gospel. Um, I'm an urban minister. I go through urban areas where individuals is, you know, most likely not to go when it comes to preaching the gospel, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm doing right now. Um, definitely want to continue to keep it going right now in California and, you know, a bunch of the world right now is quarantined. They got us on lockdown, so I'm not able to travel at this moment, but that doesn't stop us from jumping on here and using technology, uh, you know, the way that we need to be using it and making sure that the gospel goes forth and we able to pray, you know what I'm saying, over these cities and over these communities. Um, I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes, but yeah, Hog Mob Ministries, Hooked on God, Ministry of a Business, that's what we do, a hundred hoods, you know, we hitting a hundred neighborhoods this year, you know what I'm saying, um, this this coronavirus, you know, that's going out there, man, I'm keeping families in prayer. I do know a couple of individuals, families who was affected by the virus, um, I know that their family members are doing well right now. They have been treated properly. So, you know, we're going to keep them in prayer. Um, and we're just going to continue to do what we can, man. And, you know, whatever the Lord allows us to do. So praise God, you know, for him being able to utilize us still in this moment. I thank God that he has given me the vision to continue to still do this. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely, uh, you know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to be here, man. Uh, I thank God that he yanked me out of them flames. I thank God that he's able to use me, you know what I'm saying, to go back into these same communities that I used to poison, these same neighborhoods that I used to, you know, uh, commit harm to individuals, you know what I'm saying. Um, you know, I just did a lot, you know what I'm saying, as a sinner, so I'm just thankful that, you know, the Lord is able to still use me now. And like I said, man, we're going we gonna to go up, you feel me? Like I said, I'm going to give a few more minutes, and then we're going to get it in. We're going to do a prayer call as well. So after we pray over Fresno, California, after we pray over the city of Fresno, we're going to definitely be um, going up in prayer, man. You could drop your drop your prayers, you feel me? If there's, if there's anything personal, man, you can drop them, uh, you know what I'm saying, in my messenger, whatever it is. Um, you know, we're we going to just go up as the body of Christ, man. Nothing is going to stop this. We're going to utilize technology, you know, and and use it what it's meant for, man. And that's to glorify the Lord. Like everything that you have in your life is to be able to glorify God and honor his name in some way, in some fashion. That is why you have what you have. You know what I'm saying? The vehicles we have, the households we have, you know, the finances, all of these things is to be able to glorify his name. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we have to be mindful of is that everything that we have isn't ours it was given to us, you know, from the Lord to continue to pass it on and continue to honor his name with it. So, you know, what I'm saying we definitely going to continue to do what we can. We're going to continue to press forward with this mission. Um, none of the prayer walks is going to be skipped. None of them are going to be going without being done. Every prayer walk that has been postponed right now will be still done at the end of the year. So we will continue as soon as they let us up off of this quarantine thing. We will continue to go where it started from whatever date that is we will continue to hit them cities and the ones that got postponed they will be at the end of the year so uh nothing to be worried about your city won't get missed if you send it on the calendar we still gonna hit it we just gotta wait till the end of the year so we don't gotta do no rescheduling or you know what i'm saying take the time to individuals who had all of these things planned already 
Um, so what we're going to do is, man, we're going to go up in prayer for Fresno, California. Tonight was the prayer walk that we were supposed to be doing it out there. You feel me? So we're going to go up in prayer for Fresno. And we are going to pray for each other. We are, uh, you know, this is also a prayer call. This is for individuals to drop, you know, their prayer requests, uh, whatever they may be going through at this time. If you would like to get to know Jesus, you know, this is also the place to where you could drop if you're trying to seek discipleship or if you're trying to seek, you know, a, a fellowship, a Bible study, a, a church home, whatever it may be. You know, this is also the same thing that we're doing as far as with the prayer call. That's what I want to use this as well for. This is just a tool, you know, at the end of the day, this is. This has everything to do with the Lord. So praise God, you know what I'm saying? And I definitely uh am thankful that you know he has definitely yanked me out of the, you know, out of them flames to be able to do so. So I've uh let me check the time, make sure I've waited long enough. Okay, we're gonna wait a few more minutes, four more minutes. I try to say 7:30, give everybody 10 minutes, because you know how that go. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, they they getting ready, they, you know what I'm saying? Uh they might have missed it, whatever it is. If y'all could do me a favor like share this video you know what i'm saying and it's not for my purpose it's for that every time i have done one of these prayer calls i got a lot of individuals tapping in uh as far as you know pm messages and just letting me know how much that this is definitely a blessing how much this truly is helping them uh within this time how many individuals are being touched by what we have going on you know what i'm saying so praise god for what we have going on and, you know, like I said, man, let's just come together as the body of Christ, man. Let's let's get it in, um, you know, and let's hold each other accountable during these times. You know, there's a lot of individuals that are running around out here at the end of the day um, who need to understand that there is a need for the gospel right now. There is a need for prayer. There is a need for you to stand bold on the word that Jesus, you know, what I'm saying has given us. And proclaim the gospel, man. This right now is not time to be worried about individuals' emotions or catering to their sin. You know, they are gonna burn for hell for eternity if we don't do our job. You know what I'm saying? I'm not worried about emotions, and I gotta make sure that I continue to tell people this. Like, yes, I do show empathy. Yes, I am understanding of somebody's situation, but the gospel has to go forth, it has to be preached. Especially if you've been saved and you know the gospel and you have the ability to be able to break it down. That's something that you have to be doing. Positive energy, good vibes, all of them things are going to perish. Jesus Christ is the only thing that's everlasting for eternity and his salvation. But to go and accept his salvation, you must repent for your sins. He is the only way. In Jesus name. We're going to check this time, man. We got two more minutes, man. Like, share the video. You know, whatever you can do to, uh, you know what I'm saying, help make awareness of the movement that we have going on. We're still praying over these hoods. We're still praying for these communities. We're not going to stop. Um, you know, this is not going to stop anything. We are just going to have to move accordingly, you know, with what is in place for the times right now. So that's what we're going to do. I encourage everybody to be bold in their faith. I encourage everybody to hang on to the promises that God had promised us about not forsaking us. You feel what I'm saying? So let's just continue to handle our business as believers. Let's continue to love on each other. Let's continue to preach the gospel. Let's continue to continue to open our homes, you know what I'm saying, whether it's for Bible study, fellowship, whatever it may be, let's continue to handle our business, you feel what I'm saying, in a in in a fashion to where individuals can see through our peace that Jesus is real, through the actions of us being calm through the storm right now. Yes, we understand this is trials and tribulations. This is a, you know, a terrible thing that happened as far as what's going on in the world right now, but at the end of the day, we must remain faithful. We must remain at peace. We must understand that we serve the most high. And he is not going to forsake us. And all the times that we have fell short in and we have forsaken the calling on our lives when it comes to us whose ministers are the sisters who, who've been told to, you know, at the end of the day, preach the gospel to y'all as well. You feel me? There's a bunch of women out here that got kids and, you know, single mothers. And at times, you know, some of you women are stronger in the faith. When it comes to being, you know, being bold, I encourage you women to reach out to the sisters who are struggling right now. 
You know what I'm saying? And make sure you're praying for them as well and you're holding them accountable and you're giving them an outlet to be able to speak on whatever they got going on. You know what I'm saying? Or even just, you know, having that fellowship when it comes to the sisterhood, y'all building. And as far as us as brothers as well, you know, let's do the same thing. You feel me? Definitely. So, all right, 10 minutes, man. I gave everyone 10 minutes. We're going to get it in. We're going to get in prayer over, you know what I'm saying, the city of Fresno. Uh I've been out in Fresno for the last 11 years. I've been out there a lot. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple uh, a couple rallies from out there. Um, I've done ministry out there when it comes to, you know, pray for my hood. You know, multiple ministry events out there. And there is definitely a need. Uh, everyone needs the gospel. The world needs the gospel. But I'm talking about urban neighborhoods and oppressed areas and poverty stricken communities. You know what I'm saying? I've been out there and it is a dire need for that in Fresno. And so let's get in prayer, man. Let's let's come before the Lord together, man, and let's pray over this city. Let's be let's be mindful of what's going on in these times. Let's be intentional with what God puts on our heart. And let's allow this to be just a place of, you know, us going up together as the body, man, holding each other accountable, getting it in, in prayer. You feel me? Proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it is the only way onto salvation. So let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you right now, Lord, confessing my sins, Lord, that I have committed and asking for your forgiveness, Lord. I come before you, Lord, asking for forgiveness if I have dishonored your name or wronged your people in any type of way, Lord. I ask that there is any iniquity in me right now, Lord, even the size of a mustard seed, that you remove it and cast it to the pits of hell in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray that this live is glorifying and honoring to your name, Lord. This has nothing to do about a ministry name. This has nothing to do about me or a social status or anything like that. We are coming together right now praying for the city of Fresno, California, Lord. We understand we can't be there physically, but we can be there spiritually, Lord. And we can continue to pray over this city. We understand the needs that need to be met out there in the city right now with the times that are going on, Lord. It's not just the coronavirus, Lord. There has been oppression that's been affecting that city. In the world, there's been, you know, prostitution, Lord, gang culture, uh, gun violence. You know, the, the youth are losing their lives out there right now, Lord. And we just want to pray over that community right now, Lord. We want we want to pray for protection that you put a hedge of protection over that city. We want your spirit to fall, Lord, on that city, Lord, and that the city and the individuals who are lost in it, Lord, that you will empower the believers out there, Lord, that through these times that they are praying harder, Lord, and they are making sure that they are doing their job when it comes to proclaiming the gospel, Lord. And it truly comes to hitting the streets, Lord, when it comes to truly preaching your word and praying over individuals and allowing that seed to be planted, Lord. A lot of us want to see the harvest so much that when we plant the seeds at times, we wonder if you're even going to water them. But as long as we have faith in you, we know that you're going to water them seeds. We know that there will be a harvest as long as, it, as long as we are being diligent and we are honoring your name and doing what you had asked us to do. And as long as we have faith, Lord, I pray right now for the boldness of the body, Lord, in the city of Fresno. I pray that they continue to pray over the community, pray over their city, Lord. I pray that even though we can't gather in the church, Lord, that we will do uh, lives, on this social media platform until they cut this off, Lord, that we will gather on here. That we will pray together. We will worship you, Lord. We'll have Bible studies, Lord. We will have church on here, Lord. You know what I'm saying? We will do this until these individuals live up, you know, let us off this lockdown and this quarantine. But we just pray to you, Lord, and truly asking you, Lord, as the body of Christ, Lord, it says that if we humble ourselves in your word in Second Chronicles, Lord, chapter 7, verse 14, it says if we can humble ourselves, Lord. And repent for our sins and ask for forgiveness that you will hear our voice and you can heal our land. So I pray for the body of Christ right now, Lord, that we have faith in that, in your word, in your scripture, Lord. That we have faith that you will heal the land, not just of Fresno, California, but of this world and everything that is going on in this world right now, Lord. I pray for every family that was affected. I pray for every individual right now that is going through trials and tribulations that don't understand i pray that you keep them at peace through this storm i pray for the city of fresno lord that this be a wake-up call that your warning before destruction if this is it lord i pray that they wake up 
Because you were the only way on the salvation, Lord. So I pray for the city of Fresno right now, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to even pray for that city, Lord. Because we understand, Lord, how much the gospel needs to be in them streets. We understand the oppressed communities that are out there, Lord. We understand the gang culture and the gang violence that is going on. We understand the prostitution, the addiction, the drugs. We understand the stronghold of demonic spirits, Lord, when it comes to uh, just a cold hold out there on that city, Lord, the darkness that is out there. We pray that we continue to shine a light in that city, Lord. We pray that we go forth and continue to make sure that our boldness and our faith is evidence that you are living, Lord, inside of us, that you are real, Lord. That without a question that you can heal them just like you healed us. That you can save them just like you saved us. That you can show them the same unmerited love that you showed us, Lord. And I ask that we just continue to pray for Fresno, California and lift them up to you right now, Lord. For we can't be there physically to hit the streets on the prayer walk that was supposed to be today. But we can all gather together right now, Lord, and make sure we pray and we can be there in spirit. And we can cover that city in prayer right now, Lord. And we can continue to speak life over that city and speak against the death and the darkness that the devil keeps trying to basically pour out on them streets. We are here to take back everything the devil thought he stole in Jesus' name. I thank you for the brothers and sisters and every individual on this live right now, Lord. I lift them up to you as well, Lord, that you just cover them with a hedge of protection, Lord. And you continue to give them the boldness that they need to continue this mission and go forth proclaiming the gospel. And make sure that we all stay in prayer and we keep each other covered, Lord. And, and we say this in your name. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody to understand, man, it's not just the city of Fresno, California that is oppressed in gang violence and drug addiction and prostitution and all of these things that is sinful by nature of the flesh. All of these things that individuals are lost in and stuck in bondage with. We have to make sure that as much as we are lifting up the city of Fresno tonight, that we are lifting up the world. Because, yes, we are going to be in judgment when Jesus returns. But we are in judgment now. Non-believers are in judgment and they are an enemy of the Lord right now. And we have to care for their soul in the manner of making sure that we are proclaiming the gospel and praying for these individuals. And every chance that we get to truly make sure that we are speaking into their lives and planting them seeds, no matter if we lose a relationship with them, as long as we are doing our part. And what the Lord is asking of us. That's what it truly means. Doesn't matter about our social status. Doesn't matter about how much. Likes or follows we can get. It matters about our heart being pure. And our motives being pure. And why we are doing what we are doing. Truly preaching the gospel. Truly praying over individuals, truly getting out there. There are a lot of individuals who got things going on right now. The body of Christ. Right now it's time for the body of Christ to be able to clean out their closet. And I mean believers, clean out your closet right now, man. Go before the Lord, hit your knees and ask him to remove anything that is not of him. In Jesus' name, this is now our time. Remove the distractions. Remove anything that is not of him that is blocking the glory to his name. There was a lot of individuals out there running around trying to save they were trying to save the world right now, acting like they can do it. But what you got to understand is you're running around trying to save the world and your family going to burn in hell. Because you're so worried about running around and helping everybody else. You so worried about running around and preaching the gospel to everybody else, but your own kids don't know the gospel. Your brother-in-law don't know the gospel. Your sister don't know the gospel. Your own mama don't know the gospel. But we running around out here trying to look a certain way because we are so-called ministers. When's the last time we truly ministered to the lost in our family, though? Oh, they won't listen. We always give an excuse of why we don't minister the gospel to somebody who's lost and is our loved one. That's a problem. We running around here trying to 
save the world and forsaken our whole family, our individuals that's close to us. And we are going to be held accountable for that. See, we, we fail to realize that we are, we, we're doing these things. We are also running around out here using the names, using the Lord's name in vain by doing that. Because he knows that your walk ain't straight. He knows that you ain't right with him. But you running around out here acting like he's going to be able to use you and he's moving through you and all of these things. I'm, I'm here to give y'all some real wake up call, man. Y'all got to repent. Repent for your wicked ways in Jesus name because you're not running around out here doing nothing in his name. And these are the times that we need to see. And this is what we need to be doing as brothers and sisters. We need to make sure that we hold each other accountable because we could be running around out here right now. Acting like we got everything under control. Like we live in righteous. God knows your heart. God knows your motives. And I and I encourage you right now to repent for your sins. I encourage you if you need help on this walk right now that you reach out. And I want this live to make sure that we are holding each other accountable. So everybody drop your prayer request, man. Let's really go up for the Lord, man. Don't just sit here and watch me talk. Don't just sit here and watch me preach. Don't sit here and just watch me pray, man. Let's do this as the body of Christ. That's what this live is for. This isn't just to sit back and watch deuce. This is for us to come together. This is for us to pray together. This is for us to hold each other accountable and walk in boldness. That's what these are for. So drop your prayer requests. The likes and the little hearts that's coming up on the screen, I would rather see more prayer requests. I would rather see more needs that need to be met coming up on my screen and likes and, and little hearts and little emojis, whatever it is, man. Let's really use this for what it's for. And let's hold each other accountable to the standard that God wants us to hold each other accountable. Don't forsake your family and thinking that your works are going to get you into heaven. Because you got a rude awakening coming when Jesus returns. That's real. And I'm telling you, man, and I'm telling you and I'm speaking from experience because I was running around out here when I first started this acting like that I was doing everything in the Lord's name. But I still had some things. I still had some of them skeletons in my closet. I still had some sinful stuff that I had going on, but I'm running around here acting like I'm good with the Lord. My own kids didn't fully know the gospel, but I'm running around here trying to preach the gospel to everybody else. And it became a routine. So let's let this be pure. Let's make sure that everything we do is honoring to the Lord and it's pure. And it's truly for him. Examine your flesh on a daily. Ask the Lord to remove anything that is not of him from you your flesh is deceitfully wicked and any chance it gets it's going to try to deceive you ask the lord to wash you every day and you know how you wash yourself with the word with the word of god by getting in prayer and truly reading god's word that's how you truly wash yourself every day in jesus name that's what I want to see on here. J-Rock, salute. Jacob, salute. We're going to keep your son in prayer, bro. This is what this is for, man. Let's come together and let's pray. Let's come together and let's put out prayers and stuff that we need. I ask that y'all keep me in prayer to make sure that I continue to stay strong. That I make sure that I keep this boldness that Christ has placed in me during these times. That I make sure that I continue to hold myself accountable to God's standards for my life, not my own. Because that's when I begin to slack. That's when I begin to make excuses. That's when these lies won't happen. And that's when the, the lies, I make excuses why I can't jump on here and do this anymore. Oh, this is becoming repetitive. Or, oh, Lord, you know what I'm saying? I already done hollered last weekend, whatever it may be. Nah, we're going to do this every weekend until they let us off. We're going to come and get in prayer every weekend. Friday through Sunday, we're going to get it in, in Jesus' name. And we're going to let this be organic and be authentic. 
That's what I wanted this to be. I want this to be organic and authentic. I don't want this to be some drawn out curriculum every time we're jumping on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, let, allow this to be authentic. Let's build together. Let this be what it is. In Jesus' name, let us build and let it be authentic. Let it be organic. Let us build a true brotherhood, a true sisterhood. Let us truly build as family members. Because there's a lot of individuals that say they family, but you really only pulling up for fellowship. You're not really trying to get to know a brother or a sister. You don't you, you you call them family, but you're not really trying to get it in like that. So let's allow this time to let's let's do that here. And like I said, if you got Bible studies, you got fellowships you can drop the links to them as well this is not like i said this has nothing to do with me this has to do with the the body of christ coming together and showing the unity and us truly proclaiming the gospel because that's what we was going to be doing in these communities so let's use this live for what it's meant for if your church is live streaming you know uh sermons and, and what's being preached on the sundays man drop the links to that if you got bible studies man drop the links to that you feel what i'm saying allow this live to be what it's meant to be let's truly come together in fellowship let's stay in prayer let's hold each other accountable but utilize what this live is for drop your prayer requests drop you know your bible study links man drop your your, your churches you know what i'm saying whatever it may be as far as their links man and let's get it in Straight like that. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's really get it in. Let's fellowship. Let's grow deeper. Let's get more intimate with the Lord. Let's truly grow a relationship with him, man. He loves us. And it's an unmerited love. And, and, and at times, he still has me in awe. Lord, thank you. For I am so undeserving of your love. I am so undeserving of your mercy and grace. And I thank you, Jesus, that you have called me. Even to be a part of this when it comes to ministry. Even to do what I'm doing right now. Like this is an honor. We take for granted way too much of the simple things that God has called us to do. Thank Jesus for these opportunities. Thank Jesus that I'm able to pray. Thank Jesus that we're able to encourage each other. That's what these, that's what these times was meant for, it, man. It, it was... I say it every live because I want people to understand as much as we need to be proclaiming the gospel to the lost, we need to also be holding ourselves accountable when it comes to the body of Christ and making sure that we are fellowshipping properly, making sure that we're getting in the word together. You feel what I'm saying? And I, and I mean that because for you to call yourself a family member and you don't know nothing about your family member then you really truly need to examine what your motives are when it comes to whoever your family is that you say that, it, oh, that's your family. Oh, that's my brother in the faith or, oh, that's my sister in the faith, whatever it may be. If all you know of her, that she, she her name, if that's all you know of her or all you know of him is, is a person's name, how could that truly be your family? How is that truly your loved one if you don't know them like that? If you've never been to their house and asked them, can you help them wash their car or help them move or rearrange the house, whatever it may be, really building a bond together. Because anybody that I say I love or I say that's my family, I know them on a personal level. And that's what we need to understand and what the body of Christ truly is meant for in these times right now is how dare we call each other brother and sister, but we're not even taking the necessary steps to truly grow together. To truly love each other, to truly learn about each other and try to figure out what we can do to fellowship and grow more of a brotherhood and sisterhood when it comes to a bond. That true love a family is supposed to have. Because it's easy to be like, oh, that's my bro. Oh, for sure. You know what he struggled with? Nah, not really. Well, then how's that your bro? Or, oh, that's my sister. No, for sure, you know, if she needs any prayer for anything or, you know, what she may be going through, what's her testimony? I don't really know. I mean, I know she was in the streets a little bit. Like, we don't even know nothing about each other, and that's a problem. That's a problem a lot of the time that we don't even know nothing about the same individuals that we say, oh, that's my family. Well, how that's your family and you don't know nothing about them? How that's your family and you don't know what their struggles are or what they may need prayer for? How that's your family but you ain't never even built a relationship with them? Oh, that's my church family or whatever it may be, whatever y'all want to call, you know, what I'm saying your little so-called family members. I'm being one thousand. I'm just speaking on really what it is. 
Stop lying to yourself about how much you say you love your brother or your sister. Do you really love your brother or your sister? And really examine yourself. Do you really love yourself? Do you love yourself enough to be honest with yourself and know that you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing right now and what God has called you to do? Embrace that conviction. When I pray to God every day, I wake up and I pray. Or when I'm going throughout my day and God's speaking to me, I pray and I embrace that conviction. I embrace it and I thank Jesus for it. I thank God that he is examining me and he is showing me, son, this is where you need to tighten up at. Son, this is where you're getting it wrong. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to be better. I want to grow greater in you, Lord. I want to be closer to you. I want to make sure that I'm doing things and it's in your name and it's not in vain. I want to make sure that nothing becomes routine and it's really organic and authentic. In Jesus' name. Now is the time, man. Drop them prayer requests. You feel me? Drop them Bible study links, all of that. Because everybody's always gung-ho when ain't nothing going on about them. Everybody always asking when somebody going to show up at church on Sunday. Everybody always asking, hey, when you come into Bible study. But then when we got these type of situations going on, everybody be just sitting here watching. It's like, bro, don't watch me right now. Real life, drop some links, you feel me? And if you're not saved and you need to know the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's a there's plenty of brothers and sisters, once again, that'll preach the gospel to you and truly teach you what it is. That's what it needs to be, you feel me? Let's really get it in. Let's stop playing about what we got going on. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm going to tell you what, I do the live even if there's one person in here. I do the live if it's zero. I'm not worried about who's in here. As long as that I'm doing what God has called me to do and I'm honoring him and I'm making sure that he understands, Lord, I don't want, I don't want anything from this. All that I want is make sure that I'm glorifying your name and that the gospel is being preached and that I am praying for individuals. I'm praying for the city of Fresno. That's what this is, in Jesus' name. Let's not get this twisted, you feel me? Let's let like let's let's truly understand like there is a problem. And we need to make sure that we do not become a piece of the problem. There's a problem with individuals and false fellowship and this false brotherhood, sisterhood stuff. Because one thing that individuals got to understand during this time, this should be the time that we truly trying to grow closer to each other. Are we trying to love each other or whatever it is? Real talk. And like I said, man, I speak on it because I like I'm speaking from experience, man. Real life. I've I've been spitting God's face before. You feel what I'm saying? And and I thank him that he has humbled me the way he has. I encourage anybody right now that if you truly struggling with something and you're in a leadership position or you're a minister or you running around right now and you proclaiming the gospel, I pray that you take heed to when the Holy Spirit tells you to sit down. I sat down for a year because I backslid and I was out here spitting in the Lord's face. It wasn't just spitting in his face. I was forsaking not just God, but the ministry, the calling on my life and all of these things. And I made a covenant with God and I also made a covenant with my older brother to sit it down and truly get right and study the word and be in prayer. I didn't touch a microphone. I wasn't in the lab. None of that for a year straight. I went on tour with my brother. Matter of fact, it was. It was a GOM tour. I went on tour and I was I was the merch boy. You feel me? The merch man. I carried bags. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, my brother was able to take care of me financially to be able to put me on a situation to where I was able to serve my brothers. And it humbled me. And I thank God for that opportunity when God told me that I needed to sit down. And I made that covenant with him and I made that covenant with my brother. And I thank Jesus for that. Because look where he has put me now. Being able to do these prayer walks, being able to tour, whatever it may be. Like this means nothing if I'm not honoring his name. 
But I'm truly letting y'all know, man, if you're in a position right now and you know you're not truly right with God and you running around out here acting like he's using you or he's able to preach through you or he, you know, whatever it may be, man, I, I, I truly pray that you repent and humble yourself on the Lord, man, because if he, he, he'll humble you in a way that you're not ready for, his wrath is nothing to play with. And I'm telling you that mercy and grace, it ain't always going to be there. And I mean that. Don't think like it's forever, like he just going to wait for you forever to get right or whatever it is. Like he'll put you in a situation that'll be real humbling and embarrassing. And if that's what you need, and, and I pray that the Lord's will be done in your life. And I don't know who this is for. I just know that I want to make sure that I'm being transparent about what I had to go through as a man of God, what I had to go through as a minister, what I had to go through as an as a artist, you feel me, that did music, whatever it was. Like, I could not be jumping on these platforms. I could not be out here preaching the gospel and doing what I was doing in the Lord's name, knowing that I was a sinful heathen on the low, knowing that I was rebelling every chance I could get against God's word. In Jesus' name. So I encourage you to repent. I encourage you to take a seat. And don't worry about what's going to be there or if the opportunities you met, whatever. If they were truly ordained by the Lord, they still going to be there. He going to keep the door open. If that's what God entailed for your life. In Jesus name. But if not. Oh, well. My brother was hollering at, about me about this. And we was talking and I agreed. In God's word, he wants our obedience over the sacrifice. He cares more about the obedience unto him that he does a sacrifice. And let's be honest, when we look at that word sacrifice, let's break down what a sacrifice is. We have never truly sacrificed anything because anything that we do about thinking that we have sacrificed something, everything we do to honor God is beneficial to us spiritually. So how did we sacrifice anything? The only person who's ever sacrificed anything was God and Jesus. And their obedience on the death. Jesus' obedience on the death. So we have to understand, we can't say we've ever sacrificed anything in our reality. If you really understand what a sacrifice means. And sacrificing something, we have never really done that. Because at the end of the day, anything we do that we feel is a sacrifice is really beneficial for our spirit. It's beneficial for us through the Lord. When he and we have to understand that. Let's continue to pray. There is power in prayer. I'm telling you, there is power in prayer. Communicating with the Lord. Asking him for his guidance and the Holy Spirit to be activated inside of you and navigate you through these times. Get in prayer. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask him to remove the individuals out of your life that he been told you not that you, you shouldn't be partaking in relationships with these individuals anymore. Doesn't mean that you can't continue to keep him in prayer. Doesn't mean when you see him that you can't pray for him or proclaim the gospel. But there are seasons. There's people that are in your life for seasons. There's things that you have been called to do for seasons. So understanding that in this season right now. And I thank God for this season because this is a pruning season. For the body of Christ. We are, we are going through a pruning stage. And it is uncomfortable. But thank God. Thank God for it being uncomfortable. Thank God that he's removed us from our comfort zone. Because now we can hear his voice louder. Now we can focus more on him. And what he's asking of us. Thank you Jesus. Thank you for these opportunities. Thank you for this time, Lord, for us to be able to walk in boldness, for individuals to ask questions when it comes to us having peace. Thank you, Lord. We are so undeserving of what you have given us. 
but yet you still pour out your blessings on us. We are so thankful for your mercy and grace and at times, Lord, that we have forsaken it. But thank you, Jesus, for this time that you have given us to grow closer to you and more intimate with you. You're longing for a relationship with us. And it's crazy how much that we still avoid intimacy with you. And for the non-believers out there, man, I'm telling you, I encourage you. There is something that is called warning before destruction. Don't allow this to be your warning before destruction, man. Tomorrow is not promised. And that's not a cliche statement. We take for granted that we woke up today. Because someone else did it and someone else didn't get the chance to repent for their sins. And come to get to know the Lord and have a knowledge of who Jesus truly is. So we must truly understand what's going on right now. We must take this time and what is going on in the world. This is our chance that we've all asked the Lord for. Every single one of us has asked the Lord for an opportunity to glorify his name, for an opportunity to preach the gospel in Jesus' name. I've seen a lot of believers lately falling off when it comes to partaking in secular music, putting themselves in environments that they know could cause them to stumble. And I truly pray for y'all, man, don't, don't be swayed and don't be deceived by the enemy's tactics right now. Don't allow there to be an option. That failure is not an option. It's never been an option. Don't allow it to be now. Don't start to revolt back on your sinful ways and, and go back to that same vomit that Christ has saved you from. Because that's what will happen in these times. I know there's a lot of individuals out of work right now. I know financially there is a lot of burdens that have been put on families right now. But I'm going to tell you what God will provide. But you have to have faith. You have to have faith in his word and faith in his promises. Jesus is going to provide. Financially, spiritually, whatever it may be, he will provide. I am a walking, living testimony of that. I cannot tell you how many times the Lord has blessed me financially to be able to pay my bills, to take care of my family. And it's because I've been honoring to him and I've been diligent and I've been intentional with what he has asked me to do. And at times I don't even understand how I'm going to be able to make it. But I have faith and I know as long as the Lord has asked me to go, I'm going to continue to go. And he always makes a way. I understand See, we look at money to be money is the root of all evil. But making money is necessary. Having financial stability is necessary when it comes to you being able to truly get out here and help individuals. Even in these times right now, man, I think about how I could be helpful to somebody, how I could be a blessing, whether it be to the homeless, whether it be to a family who needs something, whatever it may be. And Ask me right now, Deuce, I know that with everything being shut down, I'm a full-time minister. Anybody who has a has a business, full-time minister right now and all of these things, every single one of us have been hit financially by what is going on. But I can tell you the truth, God is providing in this time. And I'm going to continue to honor him. And I thank him. And I thank Jesus because at the end of the day, that is just all more the evidence and the encouragement that he shows me. And you know what is encouraging to me? It's not that every month he is meeting my financial needs. It's the the stories. It's the messages I get for times that individuals will see one of these lives or they'll see a word of encouragement or they, they see me preaching the gospel or praying for somebody. And that was encouraging to them to the point to where they want to know how they get to know the Lord. Or how much that our music is being used to wean individuals off of the secular music. When it comes to individuals that's in the streets that was really about that life. You know how much it, 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 it gives me joy to know that the Lord is truly using me. Because I'm still in awe that he would even use somebody like me. How many times I spit in his face. 
So allow my testimony to be encouragement to y'all. I am so undeserving of the position that I am in, even now. And I thank God for it. And yes, I had to clean up my life. And yes, I had to truly do some self-examination. And yes, I had to make sure that my motives were pure. But I also make sure that I don't give myself no opportunity to go back to anything sinful. I make sure that I hold myself accountable. My brothers hold me accountable. My wife holds me accountable. She's one of my best accountability partners because I make sure that she, I tell her, don't give me no cut. The man, keep it 1,000 with me. You feel me? Get on my line. That is your job within our household to hold me accountable. And that is the encouragement that we need for brothers and sisters throughout the body. Is making sure that we are holding each other accountable. Husbands, hold your wife accountable. Wives, hold your husbands accountable. Brothers and sisters within the faith, hold each other accountable. Let's keep each other grounded. Let's stand firm within his word. Don't be swayed by what is going on in the world right now. No day is the same. We've been through storms and we've been through sunshine and God hasn't forsaken us through either one and he's been there every step of the way. So this ain't nothing. We're going to make it through. We're going to continue to pray over these communities. We're going to continue to use everything that God has blessed us with, whether it's our vehicles, whether it's our house, our finances, whatever it is. We're going to use all of that to glorify his name, because when you have been saved and been chosen to be a child of the most high, nothing is yours anymore. Your life isn't yours. Your finances isn't yours. That house, that car, nothing is yours. Everything is his and it's to glorify his name. And we are to use it as tools. And when you are blessed with something, I'm going to give you some game. When God has blessed you with something, whether it's financial stability, um, if you've been blessed with a car, if out of nowhere you've just been blessed with something, take care of that blessing because you never know when he's going to want you to pass that blessing on forward. Whether it be a vehicle, whether it be some furniture in your household, whether it be some food, whatever it is, a lot of the times when God blesses me with finances or he blesses me with a certain something, I look around for somebody who's in need of that because I know it's really not for me. There's somebody who needs this. Like I said, man, sometimes I'll be blessed with a certain amount and somebody will hit me and that'll be something that they needed. Praise God that he was able to meet their needs. I've had brothers bless me with stuff when it comes to studio equipment. I may already have it. I'm able to bless another brother with it and be like, here, this this for you because I don't need it. And you're in need of that right now. Whatever it is, man, just be intentional with everything that you see. Everything that God has blessed you with, be intentional. Take care of it. Be thankful that you have what you have because right now, yes, we may be in financial situations. Individuals may be out of work. Um, but for the individuals who still have a home. There's people right now that don't got no finances and are out there in them streets still and ain't got no way to quarantine but inside of a tent underneath a bridge. And how disrespectful are we at times when we take for granted what we have? I'm no better than anybody. I was a wretched sinner and a heathen before Jesus saved me. Before he yanked me out of them flames. I didn't know how much of a heathen I was until. There's things in my past in my testimony. Or there's people that I've harmed or I've hurt. Or the community that I was poisoning. My neighborhood. My little homies. My rallies. Whatever it was. Like. It hurts me now. To look at what I've done when I was a heathen. When I was a sinner, a wretched sinner, and how many times that I I was pouring out darkness any chance I could get. And it truly grieves my spirit now. And I thank God for it because I know that that's the transformation. And I know that that is the evidence that I've been saved. Because I didn't have a conscience before. I didn't care. I didn't care about being evil. I didn't care about being a heathen. I didn't care about women. I thank God for my wife. I love my wife. I ain't, like 
I apologize to both, you know, my, I got children. I wasn't the way I am today to them. I got little rallies that I grew up with. Some of them are doing life in the penitentiary for the same things that I taught them and just trying to impress me. Big bro, look what I done did. Or, you know what I'm saying? You taught me and it's like every opportunity we get, we should be trying our hardest to uproot every sinful seed that we have planted. Whichever one has not taken harvest yet, let's go back into these communities and proclaim the gospel and pray over these communities and let's walk in boldness as the body of Christ. Let's band together. It's not just for the community of Fresno tonight. This is for the entire world. This is for the oppression. This is for the darkness that the devil is trying to pour out right now. We are going to combat it with the light. We're going to war. Kingdom warriors, let's band together. In Jesus' name. And I pray for every brother and sister on here right now. I pray for the boldness. And I pray for the encouragement that the Lord has for you, whether it be this live, whether it be tomorrow, whether it be, you know, whatever it is, man, whatever you're going through. I pray for the individuals right now who have been financially affected. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord. I want to take the time now because the Lord put this on my heart. If I've ever offended anybody without knowing and because you have known me from my past or just maybe you look at how I may get down or how I move it and you didn't address it. Forgive me if I've ever offended you or disrespect you in any way. That was never my what I was trying to do. So I, I truly ask for forgiveness. And I don't know who this is for. I'm just like I said, the Lord put it on my spirit. Forgive me. If I've ever wronged you or I disrespected you in any way, if you messaged me and I didn't message you back or if I was short with you in a conversation, whatever it is, some, I'm, I'm a human being. So sometimes I do make mistakes and I apologize and ask for your forgiveness in Jesus name. And I'm sincere with it. In Jesus name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to get in prayer and pray out. But before I do, I want you all to understand something, man. Tomorrow's not promise. We must repent for our sins. We must come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ that he is the only way on to salvation. And we must understand that there is no other way but through him. And whatever we are struggling with right now, whether it be the body of Christ or non-believers, Jesus is the answer and he will navigate us through these times. Let's give him the honor he deserves. Let's give him the glory. Let's praise him with a smile on our face. We serve the most high. We are children of the most high. What more could you ask for? Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray out. Um, after I'm done praying out, I'll give you like 10 minutes if y'all want to drop your prayer requests, uh, your links for the Bible studies. Um, if your church is doing sermons on Sunday, you know the links to them. If you have a passion to fellowship with brothers and sisters and you don't have any brothers or sisters um, to tap in, you know, uh, with the brothers and sisters on here. If there's any non-believers, if you don't know who Jesus is, you're more than welcome to hit a, you know, hit us in the messenger, whether it be my messenger, any of the brothers or sisters that you see on this live who are saved. I encourage you to break down the gospel to the individuals who do message you. If you don't know how to, uh, break down the gospel of Jesus Christ and you don't necessarily know how to explain it. It is nothing wrong with asking another brother or sister if they can handle that because we want to make sure that these individuals have the true knowledge of who Jesus truly is, what he truly did on the cross, why it was necessary and what we were saved from by him doing so and him and us accepting Jesus into our life. We need to truly make sure that we understand that it is necessary for them to be broken down in a manner to where somebody has a real knowledge and a true understanding of what they are getting into by submitting themselves unto the Lord and repenting for their sins and truly wanting to be saved. Individuals need to know what that means. And it's not for play. 
So make sure that when you are expressing the gospel to somebody that they understand the gospel isn't something that you receive and then you just get a treat like a side piece. You don't get to receive Jesus and then you just treat him like he's some prostitute or whatever it is. We don't get down like that. So we need to make sure that when we are proclaiming the gospel to somebody that they understand the severity of what they are getting into. Because I don't think we do that enough as believers. We need to truly understand and make them realize that this is going to be the best thing they ever done. Thank Jesus. That they even have the opportunity to do so, but making sure that they understand that this is something that is not to be played with. This isn't something for them to use as a hyper grace card to be able to still go commit sin and then come back and run to the Lord and ask for forgiveness after they're done. No, that's not how this gets down. So I encourage the brothers and sisters who are on here and have the opportunity to proclaim the gospel. Make sure that you're giving them the real gospel, the unwatered down version, the no cut version of truly what the gospel is. Because if not, you will be held accountable as well. I truly love y'all, man. And, and God bless every single person that jumped on here when it came to dropping prayers, when it came to just being on here to encourage brothers and sisters praying for them. Salute. I truly love y'all, man. And this has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with the ministry name. This has to do with God's name. This has to do with Jesus. This has to do with his ministry because everything we're doing is what he has given us. It's not ours. Hog mob ministry. My brother, that was a vision that God gave my brother. Everything has came from the Lord. So we have to be mindful of that. Nothing is ours. It is all his and it is for his glory. So let's be mindful of that. So I love y'all, man. God bless y'all. I'm going to get in prayer. We're going to pray out and we're going to continue to keep this thing pushing, man. Tomorrow. Um, I want to say tomorrow is Stockton in Sacramento. There's going to be two days tomorrow. So we're going to do one during probably 730 and then one a little later right after probably like at nine. But we're going to get it in. Same thing. Prayer call, doing it live, whatever it is, man. We're going to keep mobbing, keep pressing the enemy, the situation, you know, the distractions. Nothing is going to stop God and, and the, the gospel being preached and these communities being prayed for. Um, At the end of the day, let's continue to push. Let's continue to keep him first and everything else will fall into place in Jesus name. Dear Heavenly Father, I just come before you right now, Lord, and thanking you, Jesus, and we thank you for your mercy and grace, and we thank you for the opportunity to pray for the city of Fresno, California right now, Lord. We just truly are humbled and in awe, Lord, of how much that you truly have our backs when we're helpless. We're helpless every day, Lord, and you navigate us every day through life, Lord, and have our best interests, Lord, even when we don't have our own, Lord. You have never forsaken us. And we just want to thank you right now, Jesus. I pray that this live was honoring and glorifying unto your name, Lord. I pray that the boldness that you have placed inside of me, Lord, that we can all grow from the boldness, Lord. We can have strength and we can stand firm on the faith in your word, Lord, and understanding that you will never forsake us, Lord. And understanding what you truly did when you died on that cross for our sins, Lord. And the power that is in your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The power that you have given us to pray. The power through the gospel, the authoritative scriptures, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we know that the gospel is not to be played with, Lord. We know that your word is not to be played with, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. I pray for the brothers and sisters on this live, Lord, from the believers to the non-believers, Lord, that they be touched right now, Lord. That you allow them to receive your peace, your comfort. Your unmerited love, Lord, your encouragement, your boldness. And that we continue to go forth and proclaim in your name for the non-believers, Lord. I ask that you touch them right now, Lord, that this be a sign to them. That this is a warning before the destruction, Lord, that you will touch them right where they are. That that feeling that they're feeling right now, Lord, after they get off this lie, that they know that it is you. There was only one God, Lord, and it is you, Jesus, and we thank you for that, Lord, and I ask that they receive you, Lord, and they come to repentance to understand that their sinful nature and their wicked ways, they will burn for eternity in hell if they do not turn from them. We thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity, Lord. It is not to be played with. And I just pray that they take heed to the warning. And I pray that they accept you unto their life, Lord, because you are the only way on the salvation. I pray for a hedge of protection for everybody's family, Lord, and who is ever being affected financially by this circumstance that is going on in the world, Lord, and just 
these trials and tribulations that we are facing, Lord, that we will stand firm on your, on your word and we will have faith, Lord, and we'll be at peace and we will praise you and be calm through the storm, Lord. I pray for my brothers and sisters that now is the time, Lord, that we band together, Lord, and we show the unity in the body of Christ, Lord, that we put aside our differences, Lord, and we lock arms, Lord, and we become more strong than we ever have, Lord, by standing on your word and the faith that we have in you and all the promises, Lord, that you have given us as being your children. And we thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray, in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. God bless y'all, man. I'm going to give y'all 10 more minutes, man. We're going to uh, drop your prayer requests. Like I said, man, do not be shy. Drop your links to your Bible studies, to your church's sermons on Sundays. I don't care if we don't have the same theological views. It doesn't matter. This is about fellowship. This is about the unity in Christ. This is about everybody right now coming together to truly make sure that we are honoring God's name and that we have a family and we're building together. Let's truly get it in. Do not be shy. Drop your prayer requests. If you're a non-believer and you would like to get to know who Jesus Christ is. You can tap in with any of the brothers or sisters. You can send me a PM. Um, we will break down the gospel to you. We will let you know what it is. All of that. Like I said, let's not be shy. This prayer call wasn't just for Fresno, California. It is for the world. It is for the body of Christ. It's for non-believers. It is for us to make sure that we are fellowshipping. So drop your Bible study links. Once again, drop your church, uh, your, your church links for this Sunday if they're going to be ministering. Uh, you know, if you do a Bible study on your own or, or you're just starting one up, it doesn't matter. Drop the links, man. Let's truly not allow this. Bi let's not let's not use this live to just go to waste. At the end of the day, I don't think it was. But this is also what I want the live to be. I want to make sure that we are fellowshipping. I want to make sure that we are handling our business and we are truly getting together as true family members of the body of Christ. So let's do it. Let's handle that. I'm going to lead this up for a few more minutes. Um, you're more than welcome to go back to it, run through the comments, whatever it may be. Truly love y'all, man. God bless y'all. In Jesus' name, you feel me? Do not be shy. You feel what I'm saying? Tomorrow's not promised. Don't look at it as a cliche statement. For the non-believers that feeling you feeling right now, man, that's the Lord. If he's tugging on you, man, and you would like to get to know him, there's plenty of brothers and sisters who will explain the gospel to you on here. You can tap in with each and every one. If they don't know the gospel or they're a non-believer as well, please direct them in the right direction uh, to my uh, PM messages. Um, as far as brothers and sisters, for the sisters, make sure that you're tapping in with sisters. Uh, as far as the brothers, make sure you're tapping in with brothers, man. We're going to keep each other accountable. We're going to make sure that we do this correctly. You feel what I'm saying? Because, you know, the, the enemy is cunning. He knows exactly how to throw individuals, you know what I'm saying, off off balance. He knows what to do. So let's make sure we holding each other accountable. Um, and let's get it in, man. Let's continue to pray over these communities. Let's continue to walk in boldness. Let's continue to make sure that we are keeping our faith um, and let's continue to proclaim the gospel. It is one thing to pray over a community. It is one thing to make sure that we have words of encouragement. But the focus needs to be the gospel of Jesus Christ and understanding that that is the only way that a person can be saved. That is the only way that their soul will be saved. It's through accepting Jesus into their life and never steps on doing so and repenting for their sins. So let's make sure that that is the focus. Yes, we want to pray and come together in the unity. Yes, we want to make sure that we are fellowshipping, but the focus needs to be the gospel being proclaimed through each and every street, neighborhood, city, state, all of that. God bless you all. Love y'all in Jesus' name. It's not a cliche statement. I do. Tomorrow's not promised. There is no guarantee that we will be waking up in the morning. So let's make sure that we are honoring the Lord with every second that we get. Let's make sure that we are honoring his name with every second that we get. Let's make sure that everything that he has blessed us to have, whether it's finances, a house, whatever it may be, let's make sure that we are utilizing everything to glorify his name and to honor what he has given us. Salute, man. I love y'all. Y'all have a blessed night in Jesus' name, man. Take this time that you're at the house to get with your family. Preach the gospel. Uh, enjoy memories, man. Make them memories. Take pictures. Take videos. Whatever you need to do, man. Allow this to be a time that you're truly growing. In Jesus' name, man. Y'all salute.